The fundamental idea I want to convince you of in this video is this. Using NGRX is somewhat complex, but it is well defined and it scales. It's like climbing a mountain with a clearly defined path. And when you do climb that mountain, you'll find you have the skills that a lot of professional Angular teams use every day. NGRX is a state management library that uses the Redux pattern. If you've heard of NGRX, then you might also commonly hear that it is complex and you probably don't need it unless your app has complex state to manage. I think that is generally true, but I have the somewhat ironic opinion that the earlier you are in your journey to learn Angular, the more strongly you should consider using NGRX. When you are more advanced, then the simpler approaches might be a better idea in some cases. Not using NGRX might seem like the easier option, but simpler approaches to state management could be more like walking through a dark and misty forest with plenty of logs to trip over and holes to fall into if you don't know where they are. If you are experienced with state management concepts and know which way to go, then navigating the forest might be the best option for you. If you don't have a solid grasp of state management concepts, the strong opinions and clearly defined path of that NGRX mountain might keep you on the right track, even if it does involve learning some difficult concepts along the way, and it's probably going to be slower to start. So in this video, I just want to give you a basic sense of the NGRX approach and how it compares to a simpler approach. Hopefully enough to make it seem less scary than it is often portrayed. In the next NGRX video I publish, I'll go into the specifics of how everything works and how to set it up. I've built the same basic to do app twice, which is what we're looking at on screen here. I can uh, complete items, I can add items. And if I refresh the application, storage is going to be persisted between app loads. One of these applications use NGRX for state management and the other uses the simpler service with a subject approach that I said was so fantastic in one of my recent videos. What we're looking at now is the to-do service that I have built for the simpler subject-based application. All of the state for the application is managed in this one file, which is relatively short. So if you want more details on what exactly is going on here, check out my other video specifically on this topic. But the basic idea is that we have this behavior subject, which is exposed as an observable through this get to do's method. And this is going to provide us with a stream of our current to do's data or our to do's state. And then we can just subscribe to that stream somewhere else in the application to react to it. So in this case, we are grabbing a reference to that get to do's observable, and we are just using the async pipe in the template to display the list of observables that come through that stream. Anytime we need to make a change to the state, like adding a to-do, removing a to-do, loading the to-dos from storage, we can just emit it on this one stream. Now let's take a look at the NGRX approach. So we still have the to-do service, but you might be surprised to see that it actually looks quite a lot simpler now. And that is because it is no longer the role of this service to manage the state. This service is only responsible for grabbing to-dos from storage and saving them to storage. Instead, we have this new state folder in our application and we have a folder specifically for managing the state related to to-dos. Again, I'm not aiming to explain how to use NGRX in this video, we'll leave that for the next one, but let's go through just one high level example for context. We will trace what happens when we want to add a new to-do. So inside of this state folder here, for our to-dos, we have a file that contains all of the actions that can be performed in our application. One of those is the to-do action, and it expects to be passed some content, which will be a string that represents what it is the user wants to do. So in this case, we would have passed in uh, film the video as the content for this action. And from our to-do component, all we need to do is dispatch this action and we pass along with it whatever content it is that we want for the to-do. It is then the role of the reducer to determine how to update the state as a result of that action. 
You can see our initial state here is just an object and the to do's property is set to an empty array. So when we want to add a to do, we take the existing state and modify our to do's property to include the new to do along with all of the existing to do's. Now this might look a little bit confusing because we are using the spread operator to create a new object. But the basic idea of what we're doing here is we're taking in this current state and the content for the to-do that's being created. We return this new object and to make our new object an exact duplicate of the previous state, we use the spread operator, but we don't want to just return an exact duplicate. We want to update the to-dos property. So we supply a new to-dos property using all of the old to-dos plus our one new to-do. And this isn't really anything specific to do with NGRX anyway. This is just a way that we can work with immutable data. As in, we don't want to mutate existing objects. We are creating new ones. So at this point, now that that action has been handled by the reducer, the state has been updated and that's basically it. We would just follow the same sort of process for all the other actions in the app, like remove to do, and the way this state is updated is just going to be a little bit different for each one. But it does get a little trickier here because we also want to make sure we save those to-dos in storage. And this is where effects come into the picture. An effect can detect that a certain action has been dispatched and it can perform some side effect as a result. So in this case, we have an effect that listens for the add to do and remove to do actions. And when it detects those, it is going to grab the current state from the store. And then it is going to save that into storage using our save to do's method that we defined in the service. So the basic idea here is that anytime a to do is added or removed, we take whatever the current to do's are and we save them all to storage. So you can see here, if I add a new to-do, if I were to save that, refresh the application, it is going to remain there because it's been saved to storage. And we do also use an effect to load things from storage as well, but that's something I'm going to get into in the next video. Now, when we want to grab our new state that we've created, we use a selector, which is the final sort of main concept in NGRX. We have actions, reduces, effects, and selectors. And the selector allows us to grab what we're interested in from the state. So we might have a whole bunch of things stored in our global state, but in this case, all I want is the to-dos. So we create a selector to select just the bit of state we want. And then we just call this.store.select and the selector that we created, and that is going to return a stream of that state and the end result here is very similar to the other example with the subject in a service approach where we can just take that stream, use the async pipe in the template to display all of the to-dos. So one of these two approaches clearly seems simpler than the other. And I totally get why you might want to avoid NGRX to begin with and why people would recommend that you just use a simpler approach to state management. But State management is difficult regardless. NGRX just makes it obvious and clear and gives you the tools you need to manage it. Simpler approaches can hide the complexity until it comes back to bite you. If you learn how to use NGRX, you're going to have a clear, organized, scalable, and predictable way to manage state in any application you build. You'll also learn concepts that are important for building modern Angular applications in general. If you don't use NGRX and take a simpler approach, it might be easier in some cases, but you might not have the experience to know when you are going to get yourself in trouble. I'm going to go through building this application in depth in my next NGRX video. So if you want to stick around for that, make sure to subscribe. And of course, if you like this video, feel free to give it a like and I will see you in the next video.